A chemical equation is a chemical equation that has attached to it the value of the delta H associated with that reaction. Now, you, if you see that superscript zero there, that means you're dealing with a constant pressure, assuming a constant pressure of one bar. Now, the old standard is standard one pressure is one atmosphere, which is uh, about 1% higher than uh, one bar. Okay. Uh, most freshman chemistry textbooks still use one atmosphere as a standard pressure, but the modern standard pressure is one bar. Okay. So if you see that superscript zero next to the delta H, that simply means you're dealing with a process where the constant pressure happens to be one bar or one atmosphere. It's pretty much the same, uh, just a 1% difference. Okay. So uh, in a thermochemical equation, not only must you specify the delta H, you also specify the physical states of the reactants and products involved in the reaction. Here you have two reactions which look, which look the same, right? H2 plus O2 gives you water. But here you have two different delta H values. Why is that? Because you're speci this particular reaction here, the first one listed, has liquid water as the product, whereas the second one over here has gaseous water as a product. So the delta H that's associated with the reaction, the reaction enthalpy, depends on what the physical states are for your reactants and products. So you must include physical states of reactants and products for your thermochemical equation. S for solid, L for liquid, G for gas, AQ means aqueous solution. Right? Now, if you have a solid reactant or product, and that reactant or product, that solid, is known to exist in more than one form, you must specify the form. For example, carbon, solid carbon can be in the form of graphite or it can be in the form of diamond. So you have to specify what form it is. Now, if you just say carbon solid, okay, then we, we are going to assume that that is refers to the solid, the most stable solid form, okay, at one atmosphere, at one bar pressure. And unless otherwise specified, we're looking at temperature of 298 Kelvin, okay? So unless as otherwise specified, we're imagining that we start off with reactants at 298 Kelvin and end up with products at 298 Kelvin. So that's how you would interpret your thermochemical equation. Now, oftentimes you'll see this subscript R drop from a thermochemical equation. Okay, so you might see this thermochemical equation without that R down there. And that's, it's okay because it's attached to the chemical or thermochemical equation. It's obvious that that delta H refers to that particular reaction. So it's okay to, uh, if it's obvious that you're referring to the reaction, you can drop the R subscript, okay? And oftentimes you also just drop that superscript zero. If you don't put that in, no, it's okay. You just, um, um, Assume you have you're dealing with one atmosphere. Okay. So consider the hypothetical reaction here, represented by this hypothetical thermochemical equation. What's a delta H for a reaction where 0.9 moles of X is consumed? The number that you attach here, okay, this corresponds to the situation where three moles of X are involved one mole of Y is involved, and two moles of Z are involved. In other words, that corresponds to the moles involved in your balance equation. So it's negative 75 if three moles of X and one mole of Y were consumed and two moles of Z were produced. But what if you have a reaction, you carry out one in the lab, and it's only 0.9 moles of X consumed? What would you have to do? Well. These are all directly proportional quantities, so you can just say one. You can just use a conversion factor, okay? So you can say, if only 0.9 moles of X are consumed, I can just do a conversion here. I can say, well, uh, it's going to involve, net, so our delta H for this would be negative 75 kilojoules for three moles of X, right? Times 0.9 moles of X. So that's all you have to do. It's really saying it's negative 75 for 3 moles of X, or as you can say, it's 25 kilojoules per mole of X, right? So our delta H in this case is how much? Negative 22.5 kilojoules, okay? 
and two sig figs so a negative 23 or negative 22 kilojoules